they do. They use the, uh, them for other products. You're not helping our blood drive next month. The <laughs> Red Cross gets significant money for that. Okay, next. All right. So um, we've covered um, trolley. So now we move to non-immune, which I will talk about bacterial contamination and transfusion associated circulatory overload taco. They talk about trolley and taco at every meeting I go to. <laughs> Taco's a new term for me. It's just it's short for it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an ethnic diversity. Oh, thank you. Okay, so bacterial contamination can happen, obviously, during processing, but it's more common in platelets because they sit around, they sit at room temperature for, what, five days? Five days. Five days. Um, and if there is bacterial contamination, obviously you can have very fast, you know, um, reaction, um, endotoxin, uh, hypotension, shock, fever, the whole nine yards. Um, diagnosis is by, you know, stopping the transfusion, send it down, we'll do a gram stain, a blood culture of both the component and the patient, stop and give antibiotics. Okay, so TACO as opposed to trial is um, pulmonary edema due to volume overload following a transfusion. It usually occurs at the end of the transfusion, that makes sense. Um, may occur up to six hours after its completion. So six hours for trolley and six hours, you know, I mean, it, it's similar. Um, it's also underreported, and it, but it's one of the most common things. I think this we do see. This happens, I see it in charts and, and it's, um, Addressed by diuresis. Yeah, I started to say I see a lot of a lot of get Lasix in between <coughs> first and second unit. I do too. Yeah, that's because the majority of patients that we transfuse are older with a history of heart failure. Absolutely. That's prevent. exactly. And also right. because they're normal bulimic. That too. Yes. Because they're not. Yeah. Because they're more chronic. Right. So you get all the symptoms you do with you know a fluid overload, dyspnea, apnea, the whole nine yards. Differential diagnosis is trolley, anaphylaxis, bacterial contamination, and underlying disease. I guess if they have CHF, you know, that's, that counts as that. Always need to rule out a hemolytic transfusion reaction. Treat with diuresis and fluid restriction, uh, preventable by identifying high-risk patients, which you just mentioned, um, older people, um, compromised cardiovascular function, etc. Transfuse more slowly, perhaps or a split units they mentioned question for children. Okay, so I made up this thing. Uh, it's a little, I was getting confused between trolley and taco. It's hard to keep in, um, but if you look at it side by side, um, trolley is non-cardiogenic, so no JVP or normal. Uh, cardiogenic is taco, so you get like a raised JVP, uh, jugular venous pressure. Uh, in trolley, patients are hypotensive. In um, taco, they're hypertensive. Uh, pulmonary wedge pressures low to normal in uh, trolley and raised in taco. Chest x-ray um, may be similar. You know, they're just kind of a, we saw the trolley and I guess um, signs of pulmonary edema in taco. Um, BNP. Um, may be helpful in differentiating the two because it would be elevated in circulatory conditions. Um, diuretics, they don't respond in trolley and uh, they improve with uh, fluids in trolley and obviously you wouldn't give fluids to people in taco. Okay, back to the thing. Um, so we've f finished the acute ones now. We've covered all of the ones, and so we're going to move on to the delayed reactions.